You know, John Kluge was originally, a, before, I don't know, but he, he usually was a food broker in Boston. He ran, and he owned that food brokerage business for a long, long time. He may still own it for all I know. But he, uh, as I recall, and you're good at history too, I think he bought the old Dumont stations, uh, which was really the beginnings of uh, the Metro Media uh, uh, basic assets. And uh, he, he built a broadcasting operation initially. And uh, <clears throat> at some point in the mid-60s, he someone sold him, I think it was Bill Hayes, sold him on the concept that he should go into production business. And uh, David Wolper had this pretty extensive uh, documentary library, which he overvalued. And Kluge paid him a bundle of money. And of course, then things started to go downhill because John began to find out that the library didn't have the value that he paid because he couldn't sell at the prices that David had projected. So uh, I think the final thing happened was uh, was David. Well, David, you know, he did some good things. He did um, uh, at Suzanne Belgian. He did Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. But he wanted to, like, go into movies, you know. John bought it to be in television, but he wanted to go into movies. And uh, he bought a book just like, boom, paid 600 grand for a book called Confessions of Nat Turner. But he laid it off. And Kluge didn't know this. He laid it off at Fox. He had them. They picked up the money. But John, from that point forward, he got crazy about how, the, you know, this is not the business I want to be in. So he and, and David kind of worked a way for David to move on. David left behind a lot of the business that he drummed up. He started a National Geographic documentary series. He started Jacques Cousteau there. He had a, the, the company had a documentary division. Bud Rifkin was their sales guy. Harvey Barnhart was becoming a producer. Uh, Alan Landsberg was making television movies, and he made a movie that went, I don't know, 30,000 over you. I thought it was the end of the world. They never stopped talking about black gold. And at some point, John got so crazy that he called the sheriff and locked the place up and threw all these guys out. So Frank Reel, who I'd worked with at Ziv, was out of United Artists. They bought Ziv. Frank stayed on because he was 65, and they had a you know they had a mandatory retirement. Somehow or another, he came together with this guy Birch, who ran the Playbill. You know the the uh, mag the little book that they pass out in all legitimate theaters, which John had bought. John would buy stuff, you know, on a whim. I buy, I'll buy Playbill, you know, I read my name, and um, so Frank came in, and he had to like pull it all together because he had these people but nothing going. Frank had developed one thing from the his his UA days and that was he had a wonderful relationship with the William Morris Agency especially Sammy Weisbord who ran the television packaging operation and when Frank took over Metro Media Producers Corp which was this kind of <laughs> miscombobulated operation that had to be put back together because, you know, people were there who had loyalties to the old management and so forth. Uh, Sammy he said that he would he would support him, and he did. He did. How? He brought How? projects in there. He brought uh, the Marlo Thomas series, That Girl, for distribution. Uh, Merv Griffin was a William Morris agency client when he went off CBS. He brought him to uh, to Frank. Now, Al Criven will tell you he did it, but Frank did it and or went on the Metro Media stations and when it was syndicated, Frank brought in an old Ziv salesman, Pierre Weiss. He traveled the uh, United States and sold Merv Griffin city by city. And uh, we had really a good thing going. It was a deficit financing business. We were generating a lot of investment tax credits, but the long term was going to come out of the distribution. You couldn't have it happen in a year or two. So he decided he's going to close it down. And uh, I was right in the middle of moving out to take an independent deal. And I got a call from Frank. He said, it's over. You know, we're going to close it down. But we have all this development. Do you want to take it over? I thought, you know, this is always what I wanted. I want to be in business for myself, you know? So I had enough money, enough bank and so forth that made a lot of money for those guys, more than they liked. 
And uh, Frank gave me all the development, didn't give it to me, but he said, you can continue to do the work, uh, and we will then <clears throat> pay you a fee to produce these movies. And I had some things of my own, and pretty soon, boom, I was cooking. 